dear students today we are going to learn about supplementary one the narayanpur incident which is written by sasi deshpande this is the picture of the author sasi deshpande now we will discuss about the author sasi deshpande was a great novelist she was born in 1938 in dharwad district in karnataka she is the second daughter of famous kannada dramatist and writer sri ranga she published her first collection of short stories in 1978 and her first novel the dark holds no terror in 1980 she won the sahitya academy award for the novel the long silence in 1990 and the padmasri award in 2009 now we will discuss about glossary stagger means walk on steadily quiver means tremble slightly flicker burn unsteadily fitch means become weak scared means frightened this fallen means defeated stewardly means showing sound judgment lug means pull or drag roughly with much effort now come to the topic this is the lesson narayanpur incident written by sasi deshpande introduction the year is 1942 the time of the quit india movement a teacher in a small town a follower of gandhi ji has been arrested his elder son 18 year old mohan and his college friend including suman believe in a different form of resistance to the british his younger son babu aged 13 and daughter manju two years young are also keen to participate in the struggle against the british are you coming manju babu asked coming where said manju even as the brother and sister were talking they heard magical word they are coming they are coming the children like others rush out Heedless of the rain, policemen now appeared all along the road. Some of them walk in front of the students, some by their sides. But the students march as if the police did not exist. They walk in complete silence. There were no slogans, no shouts, just the shuffle of feet, the drip of rain. and a low murmur from the watching crowd babu and manju look eagerly for mohan yes here he was dressed in white pajamas and cream colored shirt with another bod with both holding aloft a picture of mahatma here you can see the students are coming in a march by holding the picture of mahatma gandhi this lesson is in the time of 1942 a teacher in a small town was arrested he was a follower of gandhi ji His elder son, named 
was Mohan, younger son was Babu, and daughter is Manju. Along with Mohan's friend, they decided to participate in the struggle against the Britishers. The students protested against the arrest of their teacher and took out a rally in complete silence. They marched without any slogans or shouts, even though it was raining. Mohan and his friend had been holding a picture of Mahatma Gandhi, whose picture Mahatma Gandhi's. For a long time, but their faces were expressionless. The leader of the procession had reached the bear gates. A police officer had come with some conversation with the students. They had talks for some time. Then one of the students handed the officer a piece of paper. The office took it without even glancing at it. The students turned around and marched back the way they had come. Their arms must have as holy it up that way for so long. But their faces were expressionless. Why? Because now the leaders of the procession, Suman, was one of them. They saw in excitement had reached the bad gates. Police officer, he was the DSP. Who was he? Who was the police officer? The police officer was the DSP. Mohan told them later, came up to them. There was some conversation between him and the students. The students seemed to be arguing. The rain had lessened now and the Polish officer took off his hat and ruffled his hair. Once he laughed, showing all his teeth, but the students remained serious. One of them handed him a piece of paper. He took it without glancing at it and nodded. The students turned their back on him and one of them shouted. Mahatma Gandhi ki jai. The others shouted back loudly. And then they briskly marched back the way they had come. Then, is that all? Manju asked in disappointment. What else did you want? A dance? A drama? Babu asked soulfully. Nevertheless, he understood her feeling and asked Mohan the same question when he returned home. Why did you go back so quietly? Were you scared of what the police would do? Mohan seemed immensely pleased with himself scared. Not in the least. We had planned it this way. We knew they would stop us at the gate. We knew they expected us to protest and be violent. Oh yes, they wanted us to do that so that they could beat us up and haul us away to jail. But we are not prepared to go to jail. Not as yet. Anyway, not until we have given them much more trouble and so we decided we would give them no chance at all. What was the point then? Babu asked. While Manju listened honestly, her chin popped in her hands. It's like a declaration of war. We have told them, this is war for us and you are the enemy. You don't start a war without 
first declaring your intention do you unless you are adolf hitler amma who had been quietly listening to them said with a small smile right which we are not so that's how it was and what was the paper you gave the policeman that was a notice served on a collector as representative of his majesty's government asking them to quit india to face the consequences yeah see students when mohan reached home babu and manju asked whether the students were scared of the police mohan replied in negative saying that the officers wanted them to behave violently so that they could put them in jail but they had planned before and not to be violent he further told him that the paper given to the officer was in fact a notice served on the collector asking him to quit india or face the consequences so students they all were already before pre planned that without violence they will do the procession because if they will use any violence activities police will arrest them students that students they were not liking to arrest by the police that's what they have done a silent march next what happen we'll discuss suman and another boy turn up after they had finished their dinner that night the boy stared in with a large newspaper covered parcel in his hands got it mohan asked his voice tense with excitement yes lot of trouble do where shall i take it here let me help you my room okay amma no i think the puja room is better a light there will look more normal right as usual amma the puja room then the boy went away after a wishful conversation with suman then suman amma and mohan went into the small puja room babu and manju stared curiously over their soldiers at the mysterious parcel which turned out to be a cyclo styling machine what was the parcel that was a cyclo styling machine babu mohan said as they settled down to work sit out in the front room and keep watch give us a warning if any one seems to be coming to our house manju go to bed or else he went on noticing her this fallen face you sit here in the hall and pass on babu's warning to us babu sat outside alert and attentive he felt a thickening in his throat it was beginning and at last he was doing something what a pity gopia morli and other would never know about perhaps some day he checked himself and kept his eyes and mind on the road outside it was deserted in a little while the 9 o'clock 
Sidon went up. Babu thought for the first time that day of the war being fought all over the world and suddenly coming out of his river. He tensed a man riding a bike, got off and stopped right outside their gate. But it was only to light a cigarette, it seemed. Babu could see the match flaring then the glow in front of man's face. The small point of light moved as the man got on his bike and rode away. One more bike, Babu flung himself inside. Manju turned a startled face to him. Someone's coming in. There was silence from inside the puja room. Their faces looked at his blankly. The dim light giving them a peculiar look. Shadows quivered and danced as the wick in the oil lamp flickered and fidged. The Nama got up and came out, followed by Mohan. Suman stayed inside and Mohan closed the door of the room. Manju, go to bed. Babu, you too. There was a knock at the door. Babu rushed to his room unrolled his bedroll and threw himself on it. A knock again. Who is there? Amma called out. Knock, knock. Mohan, go and see who is, who it is. Manju, who had got into bed to notice the door? Amma's voice was steady. Her hands trembled. Mohan came in saying, Amma, it's Patil, the sub-inspector. Amma held Manju's hand in a tight hurtful clutch, though her voice was still cool and calm. What does he want? He wants to talk to you, to me. The hand relaxed. Manju drew her own hand back and rubbed it softly. I haven't come to trouble you, a strange voice said. Your husband was my friend in school. I am a friend. Amma got up quickly and went out. Manju waited a moment and followed her. There was Babu coming out of his room, making a show of having been woken out of a deep sleep, rubbing his eyes, warning loudly and repeatedly, mumbling in a gumpy voice, Who is it? Who is it? But nobody paid him any attention. And soon Babu was taking in everything with great curiosity. Yeah. After that, at night, two boys turned up at Mohan's place, carrying a newspaper covered parcel in their hand. It was a cyclostyling machine. Then they discussed that where they will keep the cyclostyling machine. They took it to the puja room and started working on it. Mohan told his siblings to give them a warning if anyone seemed to be coming to their house. So Babu sat outside alert and attentive. When the family members decided to go to sleep, there was a knock at the door. Mohan went outside and informed Amma that Patil, the sub-inspector, had come. Patil came inside and told them that he was her husband's friend who had always helped him and now he had come to inform that there was going to be a search in their house that night as he heard his sahib talking about cyclostyling machine. Then Patil informed that he was the friend of his hus her husband, means Amma's husband. And outside, Patil listened about that there is a search in their house. Why search is there for their house? 
because of cyclo styling machine now the police department they get to know that in mohan's house they kept one cyclo styling machine what is cyclo styling machine cyclo in cyclo styling machine they can print mahatma gandhi's speeches then after patel's information what happened we will discuss now the man was he really a police officer he didn't look like one in his dingy clothes he was saying to amma yes we were in school together oh yes he was far above me he was a scholar i was one of the dancers he always helped me though god knows how often i would have been canned but for him please patil sahab amma said rather impatiently tell me why you are here it's like this suddenly the man was brisk and business like his glance swept over all of them taking them all in swiftly certainly this man was no dunce there's going to be a search in your house when most probably tonight i heard sahib talking they were speaking of a cyclo styling machine it seems you people are making copies of mahatma's speech they say you have people hiding here as well ha mohan scoffed but you have the cyclo styling machine no mohan repeated angrily you are wasting time spying on us tell me the man ignored mohan and spoke to amma yes amma replied simply and mohan made an angry hissing sound where is it amma you have gone inside manju's heart began beating wildly why was amma giving them away give it to me i'll get it out of the way you can have it when it's safe mohan burst out again amma what are you doing how can you trust a policeman the man touched mohan on the shoulder mohan you are still be a very young there are many things you don't understand i am a policeman yes but your father was and still is my friend and this is my country as much as it is yours now give it to me quickly they may come any moment amma opened the door of puja room and said suma suman emerged wiping her face with her sari looking anxiously at them come in amma they come to the man it's here suman stared at amma and man is bewilderment amma smiled at her and said you have got to get away suman take away all that material mohan will you here when party last for cyclo stand machine mohan was little angry and angrily he said to patil that simply you are wasting your time by spying us we do not have anything but amma believed to patil and amma replied simply and silently that to suman you go and bring the cyclo stand machine when mohan said that we do not have anything patil just kept his hand on the shoulder of mohan and he said that you are very young to understand our friendship i was your father's friend and still your father is my friend how this country is yours this country is 
minds also though i am working in police department but my heart is beating for my country so you can trust me without wasting your time you hand over that cyclostyne machine to me because the police people they will come soon to search your house then amma went inside the puja room and brought the cyclostyne machine under her sari then what happened we will know now mohan stared at amma at suman and finally at patil who stared steadily back at mohan and suddenly the two smiled at each other okay amma mohan said and dropped into the puja room he locked the machine out and gave it to patil do you have a large speck with you the man asked manju amma began but babu had already got it that's fine that's fine the men said and then they were gone patil mohan and suman the house seemed unbelievably quiet after earlier intense activity let's go back to bed amma suggested mohan came back shortly suman manju asked him anxiously is all right go to bed manju amma said bed with police about to come but nevertheless she did drop off at some time and came out of her sleep with a jerk to hear a loud knock at the door it was repeated manju sat up in sudden fright amma patted her com- confrontingly who is it she asked loudly open the door the strange voice ordered mohan si who oh, it is amma said it was like going through something all over again but this time they knew for sure it was not a friend standing out there no need for mohan to announce amma it's the police then at the end what happened mohan denied to give the cyclostang machine but amma said that we can trust to patil and amma gave the cyclostang machine to patil then mohan went inside the puja room brought out the machine and handed it over to patil who left with the machine mohan and suman also went with them the house became quiet and they went to sleep after some time mohan came back amma woke up with a jerk as she heard a loud knock at the door then mohan asked that amma someone is there outside so amma instructed that to open the door she was prepared that this time it wouldn't be a friend outside but the police yes whatever amma thought that's true only this time whoever whoever was standing in front of the gate that is not the friend that is police only so now what we understood students whatever patil said that is correct only police came to search their house so yeah we can know that patil was there really a best friend and he saved them to get arrest by the police so this is about narayanpur incident next class i'll come with a new lesson till then bye bye thank you